second right now. Beth wrote over 170 items, 170 policies in January. Where are you at right now in February? 19. 19. Say it louder. 19. 19. <laughs> 19 policies so far. I thought it was a typo or something. I was like, for sure she wouldn't have any anything left, maybe a down day or two after a huge 170 plus item month in January. But no, she's already at 19 so far. And you're just doing an amazing job, Beth. So for those of you that are in Craig Wiggins coaching, you know who Beth is. But if you're new to CWC or maybe you're watching this as a guest, I want to just show you her real numbers and we'll kind of go through a couple of things. We have a jam packed presentation today. So get ready. This is Beth's actual production report from 2021. So I've got her uh, production report here, 2021. Total written policies, 1,600. 1,600 policies. That breaks up to 133.3 every single month. Look at the mix though. The mix of business is what I really want to highlight. 537 standard autos, 365 homes, dude. That's one for every day. <laughs> Literally one home policy every day, 365 homes, 287 umbrellas. Two, y'all look at this ratio. Look at the ratio of umbrellas to home auto. That is a massive penetration. Is she selling on coverages or price? Coverages, right? Other policies, 411, renters, landlord, boats, et cetera, a total of 1,600 policies. And again, this is her legitimate screenshot of her production report. Now, there's something I want to point out here, and I hope that you don't take offense to this, okay? If you notice down here at the bottom, I know it's kind of small. We actually had a small dip in prior year production. So, Beth, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you've got to go. you got to pack your stuff and get out. I, I'm just kidding. You might not have been aware of this. A small dip, y'all. Six item a month difference from 2021. But let me ask you, Beth, have you plateaued? Have you? Do you feel like you're, you're plateaued? Mm -hmm. Even though we had a little dip in the year, six items a month. Come on, what is that? It's nothing. But how do you feel about this year? Uh, I feel like there's always still room to grow. There's yep. always still room to do more. And you're proving it. You did 170 last month. You're already on track for like 170 this month. But y'all, this is the first year in like seven, eight years that we've had a small dip. I'll take this report any year. I'll take it any day, Beth. Amazing. Now, I want to look at her actual book. This is Beth, her, her book of business, right? It shows, and I know it's kind of hard to read some of this small font, so that's why I uh, uh, put the, the summary over here. 2,450 auto uh, items in force, 1,200 homes, 934 umbrellas. Look at that ratio. That is an insanely high ratio of umbrellas. Other renters, landlords, et cetera, 832. So 5,400 items in force. That's just under $5 million in premium. And you've been with us now for about eight years, mm -hmm. about eight, eight years or so. And you're going to tell more about your story in just a moment. But y'all, these are legit numbers. Now, what we're going to do today is actually see how she made all that happen, right? Before I jump into the webinar, we have invited some guests to attend. So non-CWC members and, and those of you that are watching on Facebook Live or maybe you're watching the YouTube recording days from now, months from now, years from now. Hello from the past. <laughs> we we want to offer to, to help you and your agency. So real quick for CWC members, just pause for a second. Our CWC On Demand program is a powerful program. We work with over 1,500 agencies all across the country. There's over 8,000 users in our program. Our On Demand training platform has over 1,000 training videos on 1,250 training videos. We do live training every single week like this. We have powerful, powerful courses for owners, sales staff, service staff, operations staff, really anything that you could want and, and need all on our platform. We also have over 100 documents and processes, including the CWC scripts that are done for you, our sales process, the Beth follows, et cetera. Example compensation plans, handbooks, I could go on. There's so much amazing content that we share on the platform. It's literally six bucks a day for unlimited access, $6 a day for unlimited access, whether you have 10 users or 50 users or two users, it's 177 a month. But y'all use my promo code, Joseph Puckett, when you're registering at craigwigginscoaching.com slash on demand, you'll get the first month for 30 bucks. Try us out. Try us out. And I think that you'd be pleased. We would love to help you make this an amazing year. If you've got questions, shoot me an email, joseph at craigwigginscoaching.com. Now, back to the story. How about I'll let, I'll let the actual guest of honor speak. Would you take us through your story, Beth? Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, like you said, my name is Beth Lambrecht. So nice to meet you guys uh, for the ones that have not uh, joined a webinar before. Um, I have been with the Wiggins Agency since uh, September of 2013. Prior to working in insurance, I did have a long-standing background in manufacturing for pharmaceutical products. Um, I am originally from Tennessee. Uh, but when I moved to uh, Huntsville, Alabama, um, I was originally going to go back into pharmaceutical manufacturing, but that ended up not working out. So I started working for a, a smaller insurance company and I was there for a little less than six months and I really didn't have any drive or motivation. Um, and so I quit. Um, and then when I came uh, to interview with Joseph, I really did not want to be on the sales side. I wanted to be in service and he really didn't have any room for that. So <laughs> um, he agreed to bring me on as a hybrid. And he, uh, you know, trained me on both sides of service and sales. Um, and by October of 2013, I had in my first full month of production, I had written 60 items. And he said, you're definitely not a service person. You're really built for sales. So I really started gravitating more towards that. Um, I had all of the, the training that I needed, all of the coaching that I needed, all of the resources that I needed to be successful. Um, and so for the first two and a half years after becoming an insurance agent, I wrote uh, anywhere between 55 and 75 items a month. OK, uh, at the beginning of my insurance career, I didn't have a lot of connections with COIs. I didn't have a lot of connections with the service team because I was new to the area and obviously didn't have a lot of um, you know, networking opportunities. So all of the uh, business that I was writing was off of cold purchase leads um, after. Well, to the point of April 2015 was when I actually had written my first full month of 100 items. Uh, the months prior to that, I, I had started developing other sources of business. I did start working with referral partners. I did start um, uh, getting help from the service team and obviously working other sources of business, requotes, winbacks, cross sales, just all the things that kind of helped incorporate into building um, my production. So um, I consistently held 100 items plus since then, uh, some months a little more, some months a little less, but I, I've really been uh, consistent with that. And, you know, I've developed um, a lot of passion for what I do and uh, very confident in what I do. And uh, I take a lot of pride in helping our clients and uh, taking care of our customers. Well, you do an amazing job. And y'all, you know, we have this picture here of the actual, what, warehouse that Beth worked at for years. And at that time, you were a mom. You still are a mom, <laughs> right? You still are a mom. Y'all look at how cheesy this is. Look at that cute baby. Oh my God, are you kidding me? How beautiful. So you're a single mom. And you're working really, really hard to provide for your family, but you wanted more for yourself. Yeah, when I when I look at these pictures, I see a time of um, where I was struggling as a single mom, and um, there wasn't a lot of quality of life there, just because I was working second shift, I was working a lot of overtime, um, I didn't have the time that I needed to spend with my son, and um, coming from a financial standpoint, it was extremely hard, and. Um, there really was a limit to what I could do where I was. It wasn't like the sky's the limit. You have this unachievable amount of success that you can that you can amount to. There really was a limit to that. And I felt very isolated and very um, limited to what I could do. And um, I, I did want a better quality life for me and my son. And that was one of the reasons that I took the opportunity to move here. I didn't know that the insurance world was ahead of me. Um, but working for a manufacturing facility and being a single mom and struggling, not only from, you know, the, the point of not being able to spend time with him like I wanted to, but also from the financial aspect of it, um, it's not somewhere I wanted to remain. Well, you dug yourself out, right? And did so much better for you and yourself. Now, this is a picture of Beth's current family, right? So we got another baby, another baby <laughs> on the way and an awesome, supportive husband, you know, and you've really done well for yourself and for your family, y'all. What Beth has done is she's taken advantage of her opportunity. All of you have an amazing opportunity within your agency to, to do the same, to have the same level of success. So I'm so proud of you. Now, I'm not sure if she really hit this hard, y'all. This would have been the biggest mistake I would have ever made in my career. Y'all, she applied with me first. She applied to, to work with us first. But, and I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being honest with you. I looked at the resume and I saw what she had been doing. She was a bit younger when we, when we met. And I was thinking, you know, maybe she's not polished professionally enough. She wasn't licensed. And I thought, I like her. But we also gave her a personality assessment that maybe scored her that she would be better on the service side. And I was thinking, ah, I really don't need somebody on the service side. So I passed. By the way, we no longer use that survey company anymore or that assessment company anymore because <laughs> they were so wrong. It was so wrong. 
But anyways, the biggest mistake that I could have ever made was would be not bringing her on, right? So I thank God. I thank God, honestly, that she wanted more for herself. She took it upon herself to get her license, to go work at an, another company just down the street from us. And when she reapplied about six months later, I was like, well, heck, she's licensed. I'll give her a shot now. <laughs> Little did I know she would be probably the most impactful person I'd ever work with at the agency. And now because of what she's been able to accomplish over her career, we now are able to help literally thousands and thousands of people because she follows what we teach. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being persistent. And what do we say y'all? What pays? Persistence. So in this case, she was persistent. She wanted to work with us, right? And I thank goodness that she did and it worked, right? Persistence pays. Now let's talk at a higher level about your growth, your evolution. You know, you didn't always start so strong. You weren't writing 170 po policies in a single month in your first month. Talk a little bit about your path, your evolution, your growth, and where you see yourself going this year and beyond. Um, so, well, I mean, when I first started, I was obviously new to the insurance world, new to the lingo, new to explaining coverages, new to educating the client. Um, so when I got a sale, I was excited about getting the sale. It wasn't really about, well, I gave them more coverage. I saved them. I was literally just excited about getting the sale. But I had to put myself in a position where I was the expert. I was the one educating the client. I was the one finding a problem to their solution. Um I mean, finding a solution to their problem. <laughs> so for me, you know, once I started having, having those additional conversations about, you know, protecting their assets, protecting their family, um, you know, finding the gaps in their coverage, helping them see, um, you know, what kind of situation they were in, that we were going to improve that. That's when I started really developing a lot of confidence mm -hmm. um, and, you know, basically taking more control of my conversations that I was having versus just saying, hey, let me see your deck pages. Hey, let me quote you apples to apples. I really started taking more control of the conversation. Um, for me, you know, having that mindset of I'm protecting their family, I'm helping them in this situation where it's either going to make or break them at some point in their life. And I want to be able to walk away from helping this client and having a good conscience that I've put them in a much better situation. So that's really where the, the involvement for me happened is just basically taking that from being victorious over getting a sale to having a conversation that makes a difference in their life. Um, and, and doing something more than what their last insurance agent didn't do or doing, you know, putting them in a much better situation than somebody. A lot of people are invested in the clients. They're just invested in getting the premium or invested in getting the commission. Um, when you take it a step further, the clients see that they trust you, they value you, they respect you. Uh, and that's that's where I got to the point in the conversations that I was having with my clients. Uh, and obviously that evolves into, you know, talking about umbrella protection, talking about higher liability limits, talking about protecting their family and not just the other guy, uh, life insurance, their assets, their retirement, all these things that you can help them with. Um, that they're not necessarily thinking about at the time, but they, these are things that you can help them and guide them through. And I feel like that that's what helped me the most. Well, you've done an amazing job and you're, you're going to keep growing, right? You're not going to plateau. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, team members on this call, don't let your evolution look like this, right? You're growing, you're learning, everything's good. And then you get to a point where you're feeling pretty confident, things are good, but then we fall off. Why does this happen so often? Complacency. Yes. Being complacent, being comfortable, letting off the gas. Don't be surprised if you let off the gas if you start to slow down, right? Compliance issues. Y'all do not risk your relationship with your agency, with the carrier, your agency owner's relationship with the carrier, overriding bad business, gossip, drama, right? Problems with other team members. That is what leads people that are at the top to fall off. So for your almost eight and a half years or so with us, you continue to grow and grow and grow. And I know that you're not going to get into the red side. Team members on this call strive to have a similar evolution to this and to not go from being great to average to no longer with the agency because of poor choices and decisions. All right. Awards. <clears throat> there's not enough. There's not enough uh, shelf space in this office to, to host all of all state, excuse me, all of Beth's <laughs> awards. But like, this is an example of a plaque where it shows every month that she hits century club for a couple of years. Like she needs like four more plaques, but 
they're expensive, so we're just not going to buy them. <laughs> she got the awards from the agency, right? Um, she got recognized by our company and was actually able, actually invited to speak um, at the National Forum for our company a few years ago in Vegas. She got to present to hundreds of people. So this, these are her accolades, and she's worth so much more. You should, we've got to give you more. We're going we're gonna to turn Craig's office into your trophy room, okay? <laughs> but, y'all, this is the thing. People only see the top. People only see the top. They look at Beth and think, oh, it's easier in Alabama or it's easier for their carrier or whatever. They just see success. And they didn't see the hard work, the persistence, the late nights, the rejections, the sacrifices, the discipline, the criticism, the doubts, the failures, the risks. They don't see all of that. So, you know, this is the pinnacle, right? All of her awards and everything are the pinnacle. But what we got to focus on is what's beneath the surface, Y'all, what's beneath your surface has to be strong. And it starts with your confidence, your confidence. I'll just talk about this for a minute. I'm so glad that you already kind of hit on it. But confidence is the memory of winning, right? You know what it's like when you have a great day and you have a great week and you want to repeat that, right? You know what it's like when you have a great month and you get that nice big commission check and you want to repeat that, right? So when things are not going so good, you just remember, I've got this. I've got this creating attainable goals for yourself and holding yourself accountable. It shouldn't be upon your agency owner or your agency manager to you know, direct your day. I promise y'all, you will push and drive yourself much further than your agency owner or manager will pull you along. She drives herself, right? Yes, for many years, we did weekly coaching sessions and held her accountable to activities and stuff. When's the last time we've had to have a sit down? I mean, Beth, I we need to talk. I think since before you left. I mean, a long time, right? She drives herself. All right. So I want to encourage y'all not to wait to be told what to do, but to take action and know that you can control your destiny with your activities. We're going to look more about that. Celebrate your victories, not just on production, but also your activity. Maybe you make more phone calls today than you ever have. Celebrate that. Celebrate your development as you're getting better when you're role playing, when you're practicing, when you're part of training sessions. Celebrate that, right? It's going to make you even more confident. Taking calculated risks. Taking calculated risks. What does that mean? You know, not being afraid to pick up that phone. What's the worst thing that's going to happen if you call a prospect on the phone, right? What are they going to do? Jump through the phone and strangle you and say, I don't want no insurance, right? They're going to say, no, thanks. Sometimes they might be mean. Sometimes they might be rude, right? Whatever. Next, right? Which we'll talk more about. What if you're new? If you're watching this training live or, or the recorded version, what if you're brand new to the industry? Know this. You're a licensed insurance professional. You likely know more about insurance than just about anybody you're ever going to talk to. You are super confident, Beth. Like Beth, I call her my little pit bull. We also <laughs> call her the machine. When we started training, um, people were saying the machine, the machine. They were chatting. She's the machine. She's the pit bull. She's the expert. But were you always that confident? Right? It took time. Right. It took time, it took practice, it took knowledge, it took repetition, doing things over and over again. And now she writes six, eight, ten policies a day, sometimes more, sometimes a little less, right? Why? Because of her memory of winning and she's confident. Know that you're the expert. Whoever you're talking to, you're the expert. You can be whoever you want to be on the telephone as well, right? The machine here, I mean, you're banking out calls. I'm going to actually show you all her activity reports in just a minute right? It's all about the activity. It's all about who you are on the phone. It's all about the consistency. And this is what all of y'all can do. Every single one of you have this potential. Every single one of you have this potential, maybe more. Why not more, right? I want you to focus on beating yourself. Today, are you better than you were yesterday? Tomorrow, are you better than you were today? Don't worry about beating Beth or beating someone in your office. Just beat yourself. All right. Um, speaking of confidence, uh, Beth's, no, <laughs> Beth's not shy. She's not shy. She uses social media really well. She's got <laughs> your know, Instagram or Facebook and other things. Are you on the Tickety Talks? You do tickety -talks. <laughs> she does the Tickety Talks, right? Follow Beth on online. But I thought this was a cute picture. This is a confident young woman. This is a confident insurance agent, right? Preparing for battle with flow. Here's my favorite picture. This is actually my phone's <laughs> desktop. I'm just kidding. That would be weird. Would that be weird? Okay, I'm just kidding. This is another picture. But did you ever envision yourself driving in a brand new Audi? Yeah, you know, and where you are in life and, and all that stuff, right? She's done the work. You're celebrating too, right? So you celebrate and you have fun with yourself and your family. Let's talk about a day in your life. Break that down for, for us. When you come in to when you leave, just kind of summarize what does a day in your life look like? 
So, I mean, for me, the, fir the first things that I do when I come in is try to clear my plate for the day so that I can spend most of my time prospecting and talking, talking to um, clients. Um, for me, I come in, distribute any type of service work, anything that I can um, uh, delegate to my uh, sales assistant. Um, and then obviously just kind of clear my plate for the day. So I go through emails, voicemails, anything that's ser uh, service related, administrative related. I try to clear all of that um, out of the way. Um, my objective is to live and breathe in my leads management system uh, so that I can do tons of outbound phone calls uh, and so that I can also assist with our incoming uh, leads um, and quoting new business and, and helping our existing customers. Uh, but that that is pretty much the objective of, of my day is to make sure that I'm on the phone talking to prospects at all times, either quoting or closing business. Um, and then, you know, if I have something come in throughout the day that's uh, service related that someone else can't handle, I, I handle it quickly and then I move back to, uh, you know, prospecting and, and being on the phone. So I that that is pretty much the bulk of my day. Um, is talking and prospecting with clients. Seriously, you know, we're fortunate enough that Craig has a really nice office that, that we're in and everybody has their own office. That's nice. You might be in an environment where it's kind of open, open office, that's fine, but I'm just telling you this. Y'all, Beth comes in, she goes to her office, she gets to work. She might leave her office a few times a day to go potty, right? I guess, right? Or maybe <laughs> grab lunch. Do you ever grab lunch? I mean, hardly ever. She comes in at eight, but at 5.31 p.m. she's gone. She doesn't leave her office. She's on that phone. Y'all, I'm about to show you her call reports in a minute and show you how many inbound calls she takes, including service calls. She's doing service and sales at a high level, and she's plugged in. She's plugged in. It's rare that you'll just be chit-chatting with somebody about what you watched on Netflix last night. Now, I want y'all to have fun. I want you to chit-chat with your team members and stuff like that. Have a fun environment, but understand, when we're at work, we got to be plugged in, and you're the master of being plugged in. She does a fantastic job. Now, talk paths and scripts. I'll just kind of take talk through a couple of these slides. We don't have time to go through every way that Beth works every type of lead today. But I want to say is, you know, somebody actually asked me this today. You know, what are, what are Beth's scripts? I was like, do you have access to them? <laughs> and what does Beth say to work win back or recoil or an internet lead or a direct mail call in or how does she overcome this objection? Y'all, Craig and I and our team at CWC over years have crafted the scripts that, that Beth is using to this day. And for CWC members, they're in the documents, the documents uh, folder for agency staff, not the one for owners and managers. We have the scripts in PDF format or in Word format. I put it in Word. That way you could download it and maybe edit it to make your own, add your own stuff. But the CWC scripts that are done for you, Beth's been, you, been using them for years, for years, and it works. And she's been consistent with it, and it works. I love how she talked about her different you know, leads and lists and things like that, requotes, win backs, cross sales. You also generate a fair amount of business from incoming service work mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Asking customers for referrals. You also have a handful of referral partners, not a ton, but she has a diversified sources of business. She's not just cold calling or just trying to build referral partners or just working requotes. Mm -hmm. She has a very diversified uh, portfolio, I guess you'd say, mix of her prospecting and her business. Um, you leave a lot of voicemails and you send a lot of emails. Talk about the importance of voicemails and following up via email. So with the voicemails, obviously I'm not trying to sell the reason I'm calling or what I'm actually going to be talking to them about. When I leave a voicemail, it is literally my name and the agency that I'm calling from and my direct phone number. I don't want to sell the opportunity over the voicemail. So that's extremely important. Okay. The voicemails need to be extremely vague, but always leave a voicemail because if you don't, they're not going to return your call because they're going to assume that it's not important unless you're double tapping. Um, so voicemails are extremely important. Emails. I do send a, a follow-up email. Um, to most, if not all of my prospects, but I do do also have campaigns built within our lease management system that I use and that are also uh, being sent out automatically through the campaigns that I've built. Uh, some of those go out every day, some of those go out every other day. Um, but the emails are extremely important too, because it's almost, it's almost like duplicating the work in the background when you're not able to physically touch the lead so that it's sending out those touches in between the calls that you're making to that particular uh, lead. And that's extremely important because if you don't stay in front of somebody, they will forget about you. Absolutely. Y'all leverage your lead management system. 
Stop using your sticky notes, your notebooks, your mind. Goodness gracious. Could you imagine having to manage more than just a couple hundred people, a couple hundred prospects without a lead management system? Well, I, ha I literally have thousands of leads assigned to me, and I still don't keep up with all of those, even with an organized dashboard. So I couldn't imagine with just a couple um, that would be impossible. Y'all leverage technology. It basically creates a double of yourself, yes. the automated emails, the reminders to call all of those things. Let's work hard. Let's also work smart. She does a fantastic job leveraging her lead management system. Now, how many contact attempts does it take to actually talk to somebody? These are some just generic statistics that we have found here within our agency. It can take eight to 10 contact attempts just for the initial conversation. And guess what? A lot of that initial conversation is, I don't have time right now. And then you're scheduling a call back. Well, guess what? It can take three to five more calls and contacts and phone tags and all that jazz to have the second real conversation. But do we close every sale in the first call? Of course not. We try. We teach the one call close. Right. We're always closing, but sometimes we need more data, driver's license numbers, VIN numbers, you know, other information, whatever. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they do need to think about it or speak with a spouse or whatever. And, and we try to overcome that objection and it works a lot, but often it doesn't. So guess what? It's another few more contacts before we finally get the deal done. Y'all, 20 or more actions, very common. Mm -hmm. Can you think of like a sale that you've made that had like 50 or more yeah. actions? I actually went through quite a few of my past sales and some of them had 30 plus actions. Some of them had 90 plus actions. This is over a period of two to three years. So there's many follow-ups in between and many um, future requote campaigns in between those. But yeah, I have, I have several past sales that have had 30 plus actions to those. That's right. What pays y'all? Persistence. Persistence pays. It's basically planting seeds. And here's the thing, most of your seeds will die. Most of your seeds will die. They'll never grow to anything. Some will grow right away. Some will take a few days, a few weeks, some a few months, some a few years. Have you ever written policies you've been working on for like a year, two years, mm -hmm. three years, yeah. four years? Yes. Stop me. <laughs> when, when? How far back can we go? Years. Persistence pays. But understand, you don't know which seeds are not going to grow. Every voicemail, every email, every handwritten card, every compliantly sent text messages, right? You have to be compliant when, when texting and calling. All of this has to be compliant, okay? But every seed that you plant, y'all, when, when you do that consistently, you will have a very consistent harvest. She rarely dips. I, I, I swear to God, I can't remember last time you didn't write 100. Do you know? I mean, I really, I promise I don't know. But like sometimes, sometimes you're at 105, sometimes you're at 140. So we got we have some dips there. We have some dips. The average of 133. There was some months last year she wrote 170, 180. Some months it was like 110, 105. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're consistent with your activities, guess what? The harvest will be consistent as well. Some will, some won't. So what? So what? What? Next. Next. Okay, <laughs> good. So you read my mind, y'all. We've been working together for like nine years. It took me a while to get there. Yeah, some will, some won't. So what next? How do you feel about rejection? Um, well, used to. Mm -hmm. um, I used to get so emotionally hung up on the nose. It would hurt my feelings. Um, <laughs> I would get so mad that they wouldn't take my advice or that they wouldn't cling to what I was trying to teach them. And I would get really upset about it. I would let it discourage me mm -hmm. from moving on to the next client. And I didn't realize that the next person was going to be the yes or the next person was really going to appreciate what I was trying to do or the next person was really going to you know, trust me. Um, but now I've come to the point where I'm not emotionally hung up on it. I can't do that because that discourages me. It discourages my effort. It discourages my mindset. Um, so now I, I do have the next mentality. I love it. And y'all, you got to have thick skin. You got to have thick yes. skin. Here's the deal. Most people won't be super excited that you're calling to talk to them about their insurance. I sincerely, I cannot think of one thing more boring to talk about than insurance. <laughs> and I'm in insurance right now. This is fun. Like we're having a good time right now. But like if I was a person and someone calls me and says, hey, hey, we'd like to you know, take a look at your insurance. I'd be like, no, no, thanks. Like I'd rather go watch paint dry. We have to be <laughs> excitable. We have to be fun. We have to be engaging. We have to be assumptive and assertive. All the things that we teach in the program and in our scripts. But understand, even if you talk to somebody, give them good advice, make recommendations. You're passionate. You're enthusiastic. You follow the sales process. Are you going to close 100% of the people you quote? At some point, yes. Okay. Well, that was my <laughs> Okay. Why? What's point, our philosophy? Yes. Uh, because we are relentless and it's buy or die. Buy or die. We will keep working with the prospects until they buy from us or they literally stop breathing. Or 
they opt out. We have to be compliant with opting out. But what I mean is you're not going to have a hundred percent close rate. Beth's close rate is between 15 to 25%. Mm-hmm. Some weeks and months is a little bit higher. Some weeks is a little bit less, you know, mm-hmm. if we're doing a lot more leads like internet right. leads and stuff. So one of the best producers in the country doesn't close, but maybe one out of every five deals she quotes. Mm-hmm. Think about how many calls she had to have conversations to get those five people a quote. Maybe you talked to eight to 10 people and quoted five to write one. How did you talk to those eight to 10 people? Lots and lots of calls. All right. Mm-hmm. So activity levels, who wants to see best actual activity levels? Let's take a look. So here I have a little screenshot from our phone system. I uh, hope you don't mind me sharing all these okay. details. Yeah. Okay. She hadn't seen this PowerPoint. So from January to December last year, she had 24,000 outbound calls, 19,000 of which were completed. I guess 5,000 or so, wrong numbers, bad numbers or whatever. You got to dig through the dirt to find the gold. But y'all, let's just call it 20,000 calls in between here. 20,000 calls. That's around 100 calls a day. Look at the total talk time, though. It's only 164 hours. 164 hours, it doesn't seem like a lot. Here's what's important. Inbound calls, inbound calls. About half, about half the number of calls, look at the talk time. 376 hours of talk time on inbound calls. About 40 calls a day, roughly 35 to 40 calls a day. Most of those, like probably 70%, our service calls. She's actually taking payments, swapping out cars, whatever. She finds if there's an opportunity to cross sell and then follows the CWC cross sell, talk path and script, which we don't have time to go in today. But she follows that if there's an opportunity. If not, she thanks them and gets on, on her day. But another 20, 30% of these calls are people calling her back from the outbound calls, all those voicemails and emails, etc. So when you add all this stuff up, it's an average of around 140 calls a day in about three or so hours of talk time not counting countless of back and forth emails with customers and prospects, etc. But how can she do this? How can she do so many calls? She doesn't do this. What's analysis paralysis? Getting stuck in notes, getting stuck digging in um, uh, things that might have went wrong with their policies. If you're getting stuck on what they might have been paying before, don't get stuck on the reason they left or the reason they didn't do business with you last time. Go into asking for the opportunity to earn it immediately. Yes, y'all stop reading notes. Pick up the phone. If there was one thing I could tattoo on my forehead, it would be pick up the phone, right? That phone is your moneymaker and leverage your lead management system to drip out emails and maybe mails and maybe compliantly sent text messages if your lead management system allows that. Do some one off emails from your own email to make sure that you're not just hitting their spam folder potentially from your lead management system. But that phone is your moneymaker. There is no way that Beth could average around 100 outbound calls every day and take 35 ish inbound calls every day if she was spending more than 30 seconds looking at somebody before dialing. Just pick up the phone and dial. Pick up the phone and dial. We teach you how, using the CWC scripts, how to work winbacks, requotes, internet leads, direct mail leads, etc. All the different leads that are in the scripts, right? You pick up the phone, you go, right? No analysis paralysis. Here's the thing. I'm curious. Is, does anybody else out there, and you don't have to chat because honestly, I can't keep up with all y'all's chats and we have a lot more slides to get through. But how many of y'all think this is not possible? You know, 100 calls a day, outbound, 35 calls inbound. You know, this, I won't forget what slide I was on. How many of y'all think this is not possible? You know, 1,600 policies written in a year over her career, looking at the health of her book and just how cross sold and bundled is. A lot of y'all. Now, somebody just added, Christina said, nothing's impossible. Okay. Here's the thing, y'all. If you think these numbers, her activity levels and her results and her numbers are impossible, you're right. You're right. If you think you can't, you're correct. Y'all, I can promise you one thing right now. I would literally bet, you know, whatever, money, right? (laughs) Whatever. I was going to say my family, but I couldn't do that because they might be watching this. Hey, kids, I love y'all. Love y'all kids. Go to bed. I'm just kidding. It's too early for that. I would bet anything on this one stat right here. I will never run a mile in under five minutes. Heck, I could probably not run a mile in under 10. Like I would probably die if I tried to run a mile in under 10 minutes. Here's the thing. You know, the man, the first man that ever ran the four minute mile many, many decades ago was the first man in the history of mankind to do it. Within weeks after him breaking the four minute mile, thousands of people across the world did. 
See, the thing is, we got to think bigger. Your mindset has got to think bigger. Whether you think you can or think you cannot, you're correct. So I'm just hoping that this encourages y'all and motivates y'all to think bigger. Think bigger about your potential. Think bigger about your opportunity. Think bigger about what you can do to take control over your own destiny like Beth has. All right, think bigger and start to think that you can have results like this if you do the work. We must, must, must think bigger. All right. Now, the CDBC sales process, Beth already talked about that earlier. You know, what she does is she follows the Craig Wiggins coaching sales process scorecard from building rapport while gathering information to lines of insurance discovery, discovering everything that we're going to be covering, going over the actual coverages. And we lead with what? Liability. Lead with liability. Lead with liability coverage. Then we bundle the auto property. And we absolutely quote that umbrella, right? We absolutely quote that umbrella. And then we go for the close. So that's like a 60 second summary of the sales process that we have hours and hours and hours of teaching. What she's doing is she's selling coverage way more than value. She's not selling on price. She's leading with liability and she is a trusted advisor. There is no way, slide 42, I need to remember that. There is not a single way, y'all, not a single way that so many of her households, think about this, have 934 umbrellas, 1,200 homes. Shoot, I should have broken all this stuff out. All right, so renters. 269. So would that be about 1500? Condos 40. So 1540. So she's got like 1500 and something property households, 2400 auto uh, items in force. So what are we talking about? 60, 70 percent, 60 something percent of her customers have an umbrella. Are you selling these people on price or on coverage? Coverage. Coverage. The umbrella is the cheapest policy we offer. Right. Think about it, y'all. It's the least expensive policy that we offer, but the most important when it comes to casualty. What's also important is life. But she's not selling on price. She's following the CWC sales process. You want to talk about that a bit more? I, I just think that when you're selling and you're leading with liability, that comes from a personal place of conviction. Because if you don't believe in it yourself, yeah. that's going to be conveyed to the customer and they're not going to trust you. Um, so I feel like it comes from a personal place of conviction on that. You also cannot deviate away from your standards. You have to have, you have to hold yourself to a higher standard. You have to hold the client to a higher standard. You can't be like immediately backing down. Well, I don't want that. I don't want that much coverage. I don't see a reason for that. Just give me what I've got. You have to hold yourself and that client to a higher standard if you want to earn that type of business. So, and, and that's what I've done. I truly believe in what I'm teaching them. I truly believe in what I'm educating them on and that I am um, you know, convicted myself of that. If, if I didn't believe that myself, it's not going to, it's not going to be conveyed to the client. So I just feel like you have to kind of hold true to that. Absolutely. At the end of the day, y'all, you need to understand something. What you do truly matters. Sincerely, what you do truly matters. If we're just trying to save people a few bucks in their insurance, you're going to be really frustrated because you're going to think, man, our rates suck. All right, we got terrible rates here, right? Guys, you work for an awesome insurance company. I don't care what carrier you're with. You work with a fantastic agency, especially if you're in our program because they're investing in you and your development. You sell a product that people are required by law to have, right? Literally, people are required to have auto insurance. They're required to have property insurance by contract, right? They're likely required to have it. But y'all, it can't just be about saving them a few bucks. What we want to do is I want to save people thousands of dollars literally tens of thousands of dollars in the event they need their insurance, okay? But y'all need to think bigger. Your mindset needs to understand. You are probably, y'all sincerely, you're probably the most important professional in these people's lives. Many of your customers don't have personal attorneys, don't have investment advisors, don't have personal bankers, right? Most of your customers, working class type people, you might be the only person to ever take a few minutes to give them some good advice. Okay. Do it and they will buy. Will everybody buy into this? Mm -hmm. Of course not. You're still going to get lots of no's. Some will, some won't. So what next? But you need to go into every interaction, leading with liability, selling the proper bundled package of auto property umbrella every single time, talking about them, about their other things as well, and understand that you're there to help protect their family and not save them a few bucks. Um, attitude and enthusiasm, talked about this a little bit earlier. It, it can be tough. Let's just say it. It can be tough to stay positive. It can be tough when you're getting lots of rejection, leaving lots of voicemails. Or heck, maybe your systems are jacked up for a few hours, maybe for a few days. Y'all don't chat. That's not this call. 
This call is not to be and moan about your systems, but things happen. Things happen, y'all, and it can get frustrating. It can get frustrating. I know that. Do you ever get down? And if so, how do you pick yourself up? How do you stay so positive and, and enthusiastic and keep moving on? With all, you have the same challenges, y'all. She has the same systems. You know, if you're with Allstate, she has the same systems that you have, right? And again, this isn't that call. We're not going to talk about systems and technology, but every carrier has, has issues with that stuff. How do you stay positive through all the rejections, the no's, the people that don't call you back? Sometimes technology is kind of acting up on you. How do you stay positive? So uh, people ask me all the time if I get mentally burnt out. I do. I absolutely get mentally exhausted. Um, but I always um, take faith and comfort in the process that we have. And the process that we have, you know, is it, consistent with our activity, our follow up, the quoting process. All of that has never failed me as long as I stay consistent with that. So. For me, I mean, there are days that I don't write business, but I've quoted a ton. There's days where I've written a ton and not had many other quoting opportunities. So it kind of flip flops on you. But for me, I always hold true to that process that as long as I'm consistent with the activity and the follow up, it's going to happen. Um, you, you, you can't waver. Like you said, you can't, you know, have a, a great day and be like, oh, okay, I can let off the gas. Now mm -hmm. I've written like 10 or 12 items. I used to ask JP if I could go home early and he said, no, get back in your office Amen. and continue working um, <laughs> because you don't want to let off the gas. If you let off the gas, you will see, you will see the trickle effects of that days and weeks later. So you just have to be consistent uh, with your activity and your follow-up. Um, you know, like I said, the no, the whole like no thing and stopping you from moving forward, stopping you from putting forth the same effort to the next client or the next prospect, you can't get so mentally hung up that it stops you from seeing that the next person is going to be that yes, or the next person is going to appreciate what you're doing to, you know, to help them. Um, and, and so that's, that's really just what helps me is I know that I take faith in our follow-up process and what we do, and it's never felt me. And, you know, y'all, I understand it can be a grind. Lift each other up. Encourage each other in the agency. Praise people when they're having a great day. Even if it's not production-wise, but it's activity. If you see somebody that's down, pick them up. Right? Let's be great team members. Have some fun together. And you know what is really great to keep your attitude up is a win. Once you finally get that sale, that high, do you still like get a mm -hmm. high feeling, like excited, your heart kind of races? That's what we're <laughs> shooting for, right? That feeling of knowing, wow, I just helped somebody. I just helped somebody. And it's helping me and my family and my company as well. It's a win, win, win all around. Um, choices and decisions. You know, Beth chooses to come into the office a little bit early every day. She chooses to be more plugged in rather than chit-chatting or spending time doing other things like scrolling through the tickety talks. Am I saying that right? I don't <laughs> know if I'm pronouncing that right. She chooses to make good decisions, right, all throughout the day that lead to her success. Y'all, the choices, the decisions that you make have put you where you are today. Sure, there's some outside factors that influence life and things, absolutely. But the choices and decisions that you make today, tomorrow, moving forward, can totally change the trajectory of your career. Okay, so really think about that. Am I, and what I'm doing right now, is it helping me get better? Is it helping me do more? Is it helping me achieve my full potential? Or is it taken away from that? Well, if you find that it is, stop, right? Make good choices and decisions and you will be so in much better position in the future because of those sacrifices and things that you do. But you don't stay late. You don't have like call nights. You don't work weekends, but you make smart choices and decisions throughout the day. And that's one reason you're so successful. Well, yeah. I mean, for me, the, the balance portion of that is really um, important. I want to have that separate family time, the separate time that I devote to them in my home life. And then I also want to come in and give them my all and more when I'm here. You know, Craig always says, be where your feet are. So if I'm here, it needs to be 110% or what, whatever I can give that day. Um, when I'm at home, I need to be giving 110% to that. I also think that if you don't have a driver for a purpose or a why, mm -hmm. you're not going to be motivated to do your best. Uh, you know, for me, like a, a few slides back when you showed my family, that is my why. That's who I want to be proud of me. That's who I want to do more for. That's who I want to succeed for. That's who I want to, to let them see how good of a job I'm doing and I'm doing it for them. So if you don't have if you don't have a purpose or a why, something that motivates you to come in here and do your best, then you're not really going to have a, a lot of reason to to do more or to do better. So I feel like your why and your purpose behind that it really needs to shine. Very, very important, y'all. Don't cheat yourself. 
Don't cheat yourself. Take advantage of your opportunity. Think about this. If you just wrote 10 more policies a month, what would that do to your commission scale? I'm assuming many of you that are on this call, if you're a team member of this call, have a graduated commission scale. So if you write like 20 policies, it's this. If it's 30, it's that, whatever. I'm just assuming. What would 10 more policies a month do? What would 15? What would 20? Do that math. See how much money you're leaving on the table. And that's money that you should be taking home to yourself, to your family and investing for the future, paying down debt. You want to buy a new home? You want to pay down some debt? You want to start saving for the future? Pick up the phone, follow the process, close some deals and take advantage of your opportunity. Now, what, how do we do more, right? How, how do we write all this business? How do we you know, grow in our roles? There's a couple of ways. You can do more or you can get better. Or do both. Do both. Even if you maintain the same level of ability, if you just do more phone calls, have more quotes, you'll write more business. Or just get better at the process. Get better at closing, get better at bundling, getting more deals in one call. All right. Or if you do both, that's where your numbers will skyrocket. And y'all, you got to keep growing. I end a lot of my emails. That's kind of like my email signature. Keep growing, not keep going, keep growing. All right. Like Beth has, like many of the hundreds and hundreds of people in our program have. Um, we're coming down to close to our last few slides here. I want to chat real quick about owning your own personal development, especially for those of you that are blessed and fortunate to have your agency owner investing in our program. All right. Own your own personal development. Y'all leverage the platform. Literally 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes a day. First thing every morning is what we recommend. We also have our live training weekly. This is a very special live training session. So there's no role play today. Most of our live training is teaching very specific script and then role playing with like five, six, seven volunteers from staff all across the country. They just volunteer to role play. So pay attention and participate in those. We also offer occasional webinars. Y'all participate in as much as you can. And check this out. I'm holding up my iPhone, right? Holding up my iPhone. Y'all, you're literally carrying around WigginsUniversity.com in your pocket or your purse anywhere in the world. iPhones, Android phones. Who has those? I don't know. Green bubbles? I don't like no green <laughs> bubbles. I'm just kidding. I love you, Androids. I love y'all. iPhones, Android phones, iPads, Android tablets, PCs or Macs. As long as you're using Chrome or Safari browser, works beautifully on any device. Maybe you can invest some time on your own, you know, nights, weekends. I don't know about y'all, but when Ozark Season 4 Part 1 came out last weekend, I spent seven hours watching that sucker. Seven hours! How many of us watched the playoffs the other day? With the two playoffs back-to-back, -back, we spent seven, eight hours watching the game. Who else is going to watch the Super Bowl and get excited about the halftime show? All you young people be like, who are those people on the <laughs> halftime show? But who are those people rapping and singing? Your, your parents will tell you. We'll spend hours scrolling through the tickety talks. Can you invest some time at home on your development? I would encourage you to. I seriously would encourage you to leverage the platform. Um, okay, the last few slides, and then we're going to have to wrap this up so we can get y'all back to work. Your business within a business. What do I mean by that? I want you all, if you're a team member on this call, to consider yourself kind of like the CEO of your little insurance business, right? Beth, you're the CEO of the Beth Lambert Insurance Agency, whatever. You have a business within your agent's business. See, here's the thing. You, you can't just rely on the four walls of the agency, the leads that the agency provides, the customers to cross sell, et cetera. I want you to focus on what you can do to grow your business by building referral partners, asking customers for referrals, leveraging your personal network, friends, family, et cetera, getting out and doing some business networking, right? Beth has done a great job on social media, branding herself. That was very smart because it's helped her acquire more potentially referral partners, most likely, and some individual customers as well. But what are you doing to build your business? I want to encourage you to do that. Don't just sit back and, and wait for the agency just to pour leads into your lap. Take advantage of the agency leads, but see what you can do to generate your own and watch your numbers go through the roof. Now, what's easier when building your business? You know, Beth, if I were to throw $100 bills at you, $100, $101 bills, and I said, Beth, you got 10 seconds to pick them up, or, and you can keep every penny, or if I were to throw five 20s on the floor and say, Beth, you got 10 seconds to pick them up, which would you prefer, the five 20s or the 100 ones? 
the five twenties. Yes, correct answer. I was nervous. I was like, did I ask that right? Yes. It's a lot easier to have the wheelbarrow, right? Bundling. Bundling is important. I did see somebody's chat earlier. How is it possible to run all this business in one day? Y'all, let's think about this for a minute. 133 items a month. 133. 133 items a month. Divided by average is 21. That's 6.3 items a day. Look at how bundled she is on auto property and umbrella. She's only closing one or two customers a day because she's so bundled. One or two customers a day. She's not closing five or six different people because she's bundling auto and property at a very high rate. Auto property and umbrella at a very high rate. She's able to close more deals. So here's the metrics that I want y'all to shoot for at a minimum. At a minimum, I want you to have 80% of your customers auto and property. So if you write 10 different customers this month, there better not be more than two that are just one or the other. There's a reason for that too. You should want them to have everything with you because what yeah. if they have a total loss and it's separated? You can't help them with the other stuff. What if there's a gap? If there's a gap in one, there's a gap in the other. So you should want to help them first and foremost with everything and let that be a standard for you. It's all or nothing. There's there's many reasons behind having everything together. It's not just for the sticky situation. It's yeah. for the claims aspect. Of it. It's for the coverage aspect. of it. You want everything to be consistent because if you're taking care of one and the other one has a gap and you can't help them, how terrible are you going to feel when they have to have when they have to have two claims, two different claims reps and two different so There's just lots of intricate details that work into that that can be an inconvenience to the client. Uh, and it could be a huge hassle for them that you could prevent. You could prevent that from happening. So yeah. always lead with the whole bundling aspect of it. And, you know, I like to say something. I'm either your insurance agent or I'm not. Right. I'm either your insurance agent or I'm not. Correct. Right. However, sometimes people don't qualify for another line. Maybe they have too many tickets or accidents, maybe too many property claims. Maybe sometimes people don't have a need. That's pretty rare. That's pretty rare that someone doesn't have a need. But maybe they just have a car and they live on mama's couch or whatever. So I'll give you some monoline, but it shouldn't be a huge percentage. Auto property and umbrella, three out of 10 times, that's it. And I think if you get three out of 10 written customers, now we quote it every time. Mm -hmm. We quote the auto property umbrella 10 out of 10 times. But if you, if you write 10 people, if just three of them include an umbrella, I think that you're doing a pretty darn good job at leading with liability, selling coverage more than price. Don't forget about life insurance, right? Life insurance or specialty items like boats, motorcycles, golf carts, RVs. Look at Beth's. I'll show you her book in a minute. She has so many other item types. It's not just cars and homes and umbrellas. But y'all bundled customers, they'll retain so much higher than customers that just have one line. And that'll help your agency. That's huge for your agency's growth. And also, it's going to lead to more sales and income for you. Right. You're helping the customers. You're helping the agency and the company. You're helping yourself. It's a win, win, win. And it's just a lot easier when you bundle versus trying to do one little thing at a time. And at the end of the day, like Beth said, if we simply seek to meet the needs of our customers and to put ourselves in position to help them when they need us, we will never, ever have to worry about a sales goal. That's it. She goes into every conversation, every interaction, seeking to protect these people as if they were her own family, right? That's why she's so good. She's so convincing. She believes in what she does and they buy into it. But she still gets told no four or five times before she gets a yes. And she's one of the best people I've ever known in terms of this industry and life. You're pretty awesome all around, not just in insurance, but she's one of the best and she still gets four or five no's for every one yes. All right, but let's bundle and you'll sell more. Let's take one, one last look at Beth's book of business. Look at this. All right, I forgot that I put this slide at the end. So I was guessing 60 to 70% earlier. And now I remember 62% of Beth's customers have auto and property and umbrella. 62%. My goal for y'all is 30%. Right. She has 62 percent of her customers have auto home and umbrella auto property that includes renters and condo. And look, 832 other items. Right. That is so many other items. Don't leave anything on the table. Now we are coming up on our last few minutes. I want to thank you all for attending. Right. Giving us your time today. I hope that you've taken a lot of notes. I hope that you're motivated. And if you're in CWC, you already have access to all of the scripts and top paths that she used and all the training that we provide on those things. But, you know, if you're not with CWC, I just want to mention one more time. Try us out. 
Try us out. Check us out. CraigWingsCoaching.com slash on demand. Use Joseph Puckett, one word, lowercase. You get the first month for 30 bucks. After that, it's less than six bucks a day total for your entire team. We would love to help you and your team. But not just thank you all for giving us your time today and your attention, but thank you to Beth for giving us your time. You could be in there making sales right now. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you here? Because you care and you want to help. Do you have any final thoughts um, for the team members and owners and managers watching this call today? Hey, Joseph, can can I ask for just a couple rapid fire questions real quick? Potentially, yes. Okay, I, right. Like I know okay. there's dozens and like it, we, we won't be able to make a dent. No, these yeah, are quick ones. Beth that's fine. Speak Spanish. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Hola. 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 That's it. Yeah. What okay. is this? What is now? Just okay. That's, that's it. all she knows. <laughs> okay, and then also, um, when it comes to the fact that you can do so many, I think a lot of the reason why you can pump so much out a day is because you do requotes, win backs, where you already have the data. Yes. How much cold quotes you think you do a month? Like fresh started quotes. I mean, I, I would say probably less than 5%. And when I say, when you, when I think of true cold calling, I'm thinking zero information. Like, let's say I've got a referral from a mortgage partner. I need to give this person a call and go through the quote with them over the, that, that's what I would consider a true cold call is like zero information, probably less than 5%. Because most of the stuff it is warm to us, meaning like we've spoken to them yeah, or somebody in our years age. ago. Yeah. yeah. I so mean, years old. we have some data. Okay. Awesome. It's great that we have nothing. Yeah. Everything else was pretty much hit. And if it wasn't, I will get you guys responded to after the call because we got to okay. get y'all back to work. I know there's so many questions, so many chats, and I love it. I mean, we had almost a thousand people live on this call. I have no clue who's watching it live right now on Facebook or who's going to watch the recordings. But I, I know, I know this, y'all. Beth is very caring, want, giving, you know, of her time and thankful. I'm thankful that she was able to share with us today. If you have any questions at all about how CWC can help you in your agency, feel free to reach out to me directly. Please don't reach out to Beth. That's not her job. So people email her all the time. She doesn't work for CWC. She works for the agency and it wrote 170 something policies last month. She's on track to do the same this month. If you have questions, reach out to me. But if you have any positive feedback you'd like to send to Beth, I'm sure she wouldn't mind. So feel free to share some positive feedback with her, whether it's online or via email. Uh, but y'all with that said, I got to get y'all back to work. I hope that you're motivated. I hope that you're excited, that you want to take advantage of your opportunity, that you know that you have such amazing potential, right? Let's get off this call. Pick up that phone, call somebody, quote somebody, close somebody, <laughs> get them the coverage they deserve. They deserve with you and your agency today. And with that said, thank you all so much for attending. Thank you again, Beth. Now, Beth, you need to get back to work. <laughs> You gotta get back Thank to you work. guys so much. See y'all later. Bye-bye. See y'all next week.